Well, hello again. I guess it's been a year since last time I drank beer. <laughs> no. Um, back for another uh, pile of beer, Oktoberfest beer reviews. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight this time. So uh, we'll keep each observation short. But um, last year, I talked about how uh, bitterness or hoppiness was not my preference. Maybe Washington got into my bones. No, actually, uh, yeah, it did. Um, but there's still good hops and bad hops and good examples of beers and bad examples of beers. But um, hops are a common part of fest beers. So what's a fest beer? First, uh, Merzen. I believe that's the current pronunciation. Marzen is the type of malt that is the the color that the grains the beer is made from are roasted to. Vienna is slightly lighter, so a blonder roast, and Marzens are a little bit darker. This results in a beer that will typically be amber or honey colored, maybe, maybe on the light side of amber, but honey colored, reds, browns, um, kind of a a, a deeper color than your, you know, mass market uh, pilsners or such. Um, Vienna, which I just mentioned a moment ago, uh, is what you'll commonly find in Vienna lagers, duh, which are uh, most commonly these days seen in Mexican beers, um, like you know Corona, uh, Land Shark, uh, Dos Equis, the, the the green, not the brown bottle. Um, uh, etc. So those are, that's the color of a Vienna malt turned into a beer. A Marzen is a darker roast, a little bit darker. It's like the next stage down in the roasting process. And so your beers are browns, reds, honey colored, light amber, etc. Um, this year I re-tasted my two favorites or two of my favorites from last year, the Flocktoberfest Lager and the Rubens Fest beer. And they're good like usual. Um, your fest beer should be malty, bready, and a little bit bitter. Like the bitterness, if you're looking at IBUs, if you're familiar with IBUs, the International Bittering Unit, or Bitterant Unit, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, uh, you're going to look at the 17 to, you know, like low 20s to, to mid or upper 20s um, for your, your bitterness level for a Marizan beer. Um, all that said, the right beer is the beer you like, right? So this is kind of a, a, a growing beer nerd's appreciation for, for, uh, for these beers. But keep in mind, the right beer is the one you like. It's, it's preference. It's taste. You like Bud Light? <laughs> no, fine. That's your choice. You like Bud Light? Great. I found I enjoy Miller and Coors recently. They're well-produced tasty beers for the right circumstance and situation. In general, I like my beers to have a bit more flavor, but there's some times that I don't want the beer overdoing the food and standing out on its own, dancing off in its own little, you know, corner of the stage, as it were. So uh, this year, um, let's just go through them. First off, this is a matter of taste. So I'm going to say the first two that I didn't like quite so much, but they are not bad beers. First, Goose Island's Oktoberfest. Goose Island's Oktoberfest. Goose Island is owned by Anheuser-Busch, um, AB InBev, the vast mega conglomerate corporation, but they produce good beer, right? That's what I care about. Um, the Goose Island Oktoberfest was on the dry side of things, so not super sweet, um, but it went really herbal really fast, uh, like dried oregano and maybe thyme. Um, and because of that, personally, I didn't like it. It would probably work decently well with the sausage, but I didn't try it with the sausage. So yeah, not my favorite, but not bad. Just not my favorite. Uh, next was Firestone's um, Oktoberfest. Firestone Oktoberfest, um, which says it's an oak aged lager. In the description for this beer online, it doesn't mention oak barrel aging, so I'm guessing they put oak staves inside a steel, um, uh, you know, aging vat. 
No problem with that. That's what some breweries do. It's an effective way to make a large volume of beer that has the oak characteristics. Um, this one was also herbal, but I believe due to the oaking of the beer, um, it does have some, some more interesting notes that were quite tasty. I enjoyed it. It's just not my, my favorite. It also had a really interesting funkiness. Um, and funkiness is kind of hard to define. You might think mushrooms, um, uh, moldy cheeses, stuff like that. I like those flavors, so I like my funkiness. I did like that beer. It's just not at the top. Um, the rest of them are actually pretty much all really enjoyable. I enjoyed every single one of these beers to come. I enjoyed all the beers, I just enjoyed these more. So, first, the um, Ale Smith, Ale Schmidt Oktoberfest. Ale Smith, um, I learned about them by drinking a Vienna lager of theirs, which is quite good. Has a really, really nice depth of flavor for a lighter colored beer. Works very nicely with Mexican food, spicy food, good stuff like that. Um, so the Oktoberfest from Ale Smith, um, it's a, definitely a honey colored. It smells sweet and it starts really cereal like grain. So um, maybe not quite as as darkly baked of a marzen malt. Um, but it again gets this almost maple syrup sweetness. And that sweetness lingers for quite some time after swallowing. This has quite a finish or a long tail, you'd say. Um, I don't think because of the sweetness that this will pair particularly well with savory foods. There's gonna be too much of battle there. However, if I just wanna stein on a Saturday afternoon to chill out on a cool day, Ale Smith Oktoberfest, right there. Um, similarly, Great Divide Haas. Great Divide is another brewery that I've been exploring recently, recently, the last three years probably. Um, they make a lot of really good beers. And this one had a lot in common with the Alesmith Oktoberfest, but um, maybe a little less sweetness, more maltiness. Um, and the had a really nice complexity to the flavor. And that funkiness that I mentioned with the Oktoberfest uh, came in really nicely as the beer warmed. This beer pours best at 45 to 50 degrees. So let it sit out of your refrigerator for 10, 15 minutes before you pour it. Or don't chill your cup when you pour it in. You know, it'll reach that really nice, you know, middling temperature that European beers are more commonly served at, and it's good stuff. Um, next, Drew Brews Fest Beer. This one, let's see, Drew Brews Fest Beer, right there. Uh, this one was once again a very good beer. Um, my tasting notes noted that it had a, a citrus, like a lemon, maybe a lime note to it. Um, that's the, the herbaceousness that is uh, common and expected inside an Oktoberfest. Um, it was quite good. It's just middle of the road. Um, it didn't have anything besides that that stood out. It's a good beer. It's tasty. I enjoyed it. And frankly, this kind of beer is the kind of beer that I'm going to enjoy more um, with food, with a meal, you know. Take a glass of this with my with my meal because it's not, you know, playing the trumpet solo the whole time. It's a good, complimentary, well-made beer. Drew Brew. Um, Sam Adams Oktoberfest. I didn't really plan on getting one of these this year, but then church had a party, and the church I goes to, uh, I go to. The, the guys are okay drinking beer. Ladies are too. It was just a guys' party, um, and I bought a. A multi-pack of Sam Adams and all the others got drunk and I was left with two Oktoberfests. So this one's for you, Dad. Um, I liked it. This was really, really good and not in a, a trumpet solo on its own kind of way. All right. It has some real hardiness, like it, it's meaty. It's 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 got some depth to it. It's like you something to chew on, but not in an unpleasant way. It just it stands up on its own, but it still plays nice with others. Um, so Sam Adams Oktoberfest, really, really tasty, hearty, smooth, and not in a yelling and screaming on its own, right? Um, good beer. Well done, Sam Adams. Super happy with that. I believe, incidentally, Sam Adams claims that they are the, um, the largest producer of Oktoberfest beers. Technically, they can't use that term, Oktoberfest, um, because it's a German title, but no one cares. Um, and they just make it in the largest volume. Individual German breweries, uh, there's some, it, 
basically it's a bit of international legal trickery that lets Sam Adams say that they make the most Oktoberfest. And it's not actually lying, it's just there's more to the story. Um, and then I did try my two favorites, or two of my favorites, from last year. The one that I did not get again this year was the Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest, which come to think of it, I just rewatched my video from last year. I probably should have tried that because, well, actually, I don't know. Um, normally, Sierra Nevada partners with a German brewery to produce their Oktoberfest. I don't know if they did this year. They did not last year, and last year was the first year I had it. So if they did this year, sorry, Sierra Nevada. I'll try you next year. Um, so, uh, Black Raven Flocktoberfest. I have a can this year. I haven't drunk it all yet. It's because I've been drinking all seven others. Um, very tasty, very malty. Uh, that little touch of bitterness that's quite pleasant, quite nice, very enjoyable. And Ruben's Fest beer. Um, Ruben's Black Raven, uh, Great Divide, Ale Smith, and Drew Brew are going to be hard to find outside of the Northwest. Um, I believe Great Divide and Alesmith are big enough breweries. You'll probably be able to find them, uh, but they're still, I believe they're still localized to the Northwest. I, oh, no, actually, um, I lie. Alesmith is out of San Diego, so you'll be able to get that anywhere, probably, or maybe West Coast. Um, the rest are all, are all local Washington beers. Um, Drew Brew, Great Divide Fest Beer and Black Raven. Um, the others, the other four, hey, it's four local and <laughs> four elsewhere. Great. So you have a great chance of finding these. Um, the ones I recommend, yeah, skip the Goose Island. It's a good beer, but unless you're a Goose Island fanboy, eh. Uh, Sam Adams, good. Get the Sam Adams. It's good stuff. Uh, Ale Smith, good stuff, especially if you're the kind who, you know, wants to drink a beer after mowing the lawn or this time of year, raking the leaves. It's a perfect beer for after raking the leaves. Um, Oktoberfest, eh, take it or leave it, nothing bad. Um, probably once again, best drunk on its own. And uh, yeah, so that's me this year. And um, enjoy drinking. <laughs>